So in this part, we'll be looking at uh, how to define files and folders uh, in an SD card and how to read and write them in a way that uh, even your PC can understand that format so that uh, the files which you write from your embedded system into SD card can be read uh, using a PC also uh, from anywhere else. So before we look at the code for that, let's understand some concepts. Um, the first concept is about uh, file allocation tables so uh, uh, you cannot randomly read and write uh, to any sector of uh, an SD card so let's visualize an SD card as we know that it's divided into uh, blocks so suppose this this whole thing is our SD card and then these are the individual sectors of 512 bytes all right uh, they are not to scale, but just assume that they are all equal of 512 bytes. Now, uh, the very basic way to read and write from an SD card would be to just uh, write to any sections of the SD card. Like you write some data here, and then you write some data here, you write some data here. Uh, in your own custom format, um, just write the binary data in each of the sectors and read from them. But this is not a very scalable solution. As you can see, uh, if if you give your SD card to someone else, they have no way of knowing that what is the data in this section, uh, what is the data in this section, uh, what is the data in this section, and where to find the particular data. If you want to find some data of some uh, reading, like assume uh, you are doing a data logging application where you read a temperature uh, at every five minutes and write it to a particular sector in the SD card. Now if you want to find uh, which particular file, which particular time period where the temperature is taken or if you want to search for all the temperatures between uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. there's no easy way to find the data in this haphazard way. All right. And also uh, you are dedicating your SD card to only one application like it can only contain now temperature data if it needs to have another data as well, uh, like an image of the room at a particular temperature, you cannot have it over here because you are just haphazardly writing data to the SD card. So uh, obviously you cannot, uh, this is not a very scalable solution. You need a better way to uh, read and write data and also in future then to recall that data in a uh, efficient way. And uh, it also needs to be a standard way so that anyone else can also understand uh, so that the data which you write from your embedded system can be read by your PC uh, and vice versa. So uh, uh, the, uh, people in the computer industry have come up with a standard uh, which is called as uh, in general as a FAT standard. It was uh, initially introduced by Microsoft. Uh, and it got ex widespread acceptance. So uh, that uh, it the general FAT standards are FAT 16 and FAT 32. Uh, the newer ones uh, you might have heard is called as NTFS, which is a bit more complex and uh, a bit more efficient than the earlier ones. But we won't be uh, implementing NTFS in our SD card because it's too uh, complex for an embedded system uh, to start with. Once you are uh, familiar with allocation tables, you can try using NTFS, but for now, we'll stick to FAT32. So let's look at uh, what are file allocation tables first and how they solve our problem. So file allocation tables uh, in general are like indexes of the book. Uh, so uh, let's clear this out. So uh, what file allocation tables do is they create an index at the start of the SD card, which contains some lines, which basically point to certain other sectors of the SD card. Uh, now these sectors can contain extra data. Okay. Uh, so like these in, uh, indexes will contain file names, suppose. So this will be suppose one file one dot txt. Uh, all right. So uh, basically what this will say is 
if you want to read the data inside a file called as one dot txt you go to this sector number and you'll find the data over there if you want to read the data uh, suppose in the ne next file you go to this sector number you'll find the data there uh, the indexes can also point to another index so what this will say is uh, an index is like a folder so if you want to get the data inside this folder go to this index and this will be another index again of that folder that again can have uh, be pointing to other files or another index of a folder so this is how the whole organization uh, of the file allocation table is maintained and this uh, ri gives rise to the concept of files and folders so your index in general are folders which can contain files or other in indexes that is other folders and so and so on and so forth all right so uh, this is a very uh, very simplified way of uh, explaining file allocation table in reality it's a bit more complex uh, because you need to your file generally also does not fully uh, only uh, suffice in one sector so your files are not only 512 bytes it can go above 512 bytes and they are generally are above 512 bytes so you need a way to uh, say that after this sector uh, go to this next sector to read the extra data after this sector go to another sector and so on so it creates a linked list kind of a format and this uh, extra information of pointing to other sectors should be stored somewhere so uh, that is stored in a in a master table called as a file allocation table which uh, which basically contains entries for each sectors or blocks of data uh, and we'll see the actual entries in the file allocation a bit later but uh, just make this concept clear uh, in your mind that uh, we basically create indexes those indexes are nothing but directories uh, they can point to uh, actual locations of files where you can find the data of that file or they can point to other indexes that is other folders which in turn will contain files and indexes and so on all right uh, now let's look at the actual uh, implementation of a file allocation table and what it looks like in the memory layout so uh, in the memory uh, if you read from left to right uh, in this figure the left being address 0 uh, and it's starting from there the first thing that comes up uh, when you read the first sector of your card is a it's something called as a boot sector now the boot sector uh, is again a standard format it contains some data this basically is meant for uh, operating systems to boot from and uh, other things in our case we will not be using this as such uh, so we just need to bypass it but it also contains a pointer to where the file table starts to so if you if you look at the uh, the boot sector is also called as the master boot record or an MBR uh, so if you look at uh, the specifics of an MBR uh, this is what it contains uh, the first 446 bytes so from 0 to 446 bytes it's called as bootstrap code area uh, you can have some basic code here which will actually uh, load your operating systems or other things uh, your bootloader and uh, do some stuff in our case we don't care about it but uh, the first partition entries so these are the actual partition entries your c drives d drives uh, e drives and all uh, these are the partition entries so these basically point to where your partitions are and where to start reading those partitions from okay so these are basically called as primary partitions or uh, physical partitions uh, and then there's a boot signature uh, this basically identifies that you're reading a boot sector so if you look at 510 and 511 bytes and if they are uh, 55 in hex and a in hex this means that this whole sector is a boot sector this whole 512 bytes of data is a boot sector uh, this uh, this part of it is not useful to us but the first partition entry is because this is where it tells us to uh, get the next chunk of data which will be our fat table so we read these this part from the boot sector uh, and we move forward now if we go again to this uh, this will basically make us jump to the fat table over here uh, this will contain the data now to uh, 
starters with uh, the directory indexes and all that stuff and we can search for our file name and everything from here uh, notice that there's a fat 2 which is duplicate uh, generally uh, all the memory cards implement two fat so if one fat gets corrupted uh, your data does not get corrupted as such you still have a redundant uh, copy of fat uh, so uh, it's basically just a uh, kind of an error correction uh, redundancy code all right uh, so this is in general your memory layout uh, after that you will the first thing which you have is uh, your root folder and then uh, other things can follow other files and folders throughout the memory can follow all right so this is in general about the file system organization uh, in the next part we'll look at specifics of fat32 uh, and how it's implemented in our code <coughs>